Hey, hi, hello, how are you? Welcome and welcome back to my channel. I am Geneva. This is Geneva in general. And guys, look, look what the military did to me, okay? If you guys don't know, in my previous videos, I had the orange bright nails on, okay? I was, I was repping the fall, autumn. Okay, I'm all about the Halloween. I'm the queen of Halloween. And they said it was too bright and out of rags. So guess what I have to do? But guess what happened, guys, when I was at the nail salon, okay? This elderly couple, they actually paid for my nails. I was actually at the nail salon in uniform because as soon as I got off of work, my sergeant was like, hey, you need to fix this by the night. So they paid for my nails. So I'm back to white. So hours ago when I was at work, I saw some controversy and drama going on with the WNBA's current commissioner of the league. That is Kathy Engelbert. Okay, yes, Miss Kathy Engelbert. Again, I just did a, a, a commissioner appreciation, right? Because I do a lot of coach appreciation videos and I have more to come. Okay, so stay tuned. But um, again, I just wanted to, you know, get do a video on just who Kathy Engelbert is as a woman. You know, talk about her accolades. Again, like she, she was employed by Deloitte. Uh, company for 33 years. She has a background in accounting. And again, I'm a finance major. I found that very interesting, uh, you know, just seeing how much this woman has accomplished. She's a very capable, intelligent woman. Again, she's a two-sport shorty. Okay, she was the, the captain of not only her basketball team when she was in college, but she was also the captain of the women's lacrosse team when she was in college. So again, like this woman is, is a very intelligent, smart, ambitious, athletic woman. So again, this is from the article uh, by Women's Fast Break. So the title of this article is WNBA Players Seemingly React to Kathy Engelbert's Controversial Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese Comments. Again, like she just did an interview. I saw it when I was at work some hours earlier. And like she kind of, in a way, she kind of sidestepped around the racism that's going on that's kind of plaguing the league due to the, the rivalry. Again, like it's just sportsmanship, the rivalry between Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. And even Angel Reese, she was just on her podcast last Thursday saying that you know, she has love for Caitlyn. Caitlyn, she knows that Caitlyn has love for her. It ain't no beef. Like, this is just basketball. We're just very competitive women. That's just in our nature. We want to win. And it is what it is. It's just a sport. People are like, no, Angel Reese hates Caitlyn Clark. Well, Caitlyn Clark is racist. Look at her fan base. I mean, it's just like, it's just so much nonsense going on in the W. So during a September 9th appearance on CNBC's Power Lunch program, the WNBA commissioner, Kathy Engelbert, seemed to sidestep a question about racist undertones that the fan rivalry between rookies Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese can sometimes take on social media. So it says, now it seems on social media, this is what the, the man uh, had asked her. He says, now it seems on some social media channels they have taken a darker turn. This is a more meaning, a menacing turn, CNBC anchor Tyler Matheson said to Engelbert about this fun, this fan tribalism. He said, where race has been introduced into the conversation, where sexuality is sometimes introduced into the conversation, that's another thing. It's not right for people to be attacking these women's sexuality. It's like, they, they, they're being brave. They're being who they were born to be. Like, why are y'all mad that women love women? It's women out here that are attracted to women. They sleep with women. They marry women. They have children. They get married to women. What's the big issue? It says, how do you try and stay ahead of that or act as a league when two of your most visible players are involved? Not personally, it would seem, but their fan bases are involved in saying some very uncharitable things about the other, he then added. He says, well, the one thing that's great about the league right now, we do sit at this intersection of culture and sports and fashion and music. And the WNBA players are really looked at now as kind of cultural icons, Engelbert said in response. He says, and when you have that, you have a lot of attention on you. There's no more apathy. Everybody cares. It is a little bit of that bird magic moment, if you recall, from 1979, <clears throat> which is true. Like, a lot of people said, like, the, what really grew the NBA league. Again, like, it's crazy. Like, the NBA always said it's the big brother, the WNBAs, where, you know, they're, they're the little sister. And what grew the league back in 1979 was that rivalry. There was some racial undertones and tension. I seen a white man, you know, that movie White Man Can't Jump, right? It's kind of like, okay, like white women can't jump. You know, she, they can't play no ball. And, uh, you know, you had uh, Bird, you know, white man, like, really, like, you know, showing players up in the NBA. And the NBA, again, like, it's still 75% black. The WNBA is over 60% black. Again, both basketball has been long known as a black man sport, as a black person sport. Again, like, I'm black, okay? Um, we just naturally are attracted to football and basketball. We used to like baseball, but, you know, that died years ago. And it's a lot of theories. I actually want to do a video on that, so I'm going I'm to keep that in my mind. But uh, anyways, back on subject. Because when those two rookies came in from a big college rivalry, one white, one black, and so we had the moment with these two. Because but the one thing I know about sports, you need rivalry, Engelbert added. That's what makes people watch. They want to watch games of consequence between rivals. They don't want everybody being nice to one another, Engelbert then said. Which I get it, and it's true. Like, people are actually upset at Angel Reese. They called her a liar. I, was sent, I saw a comment in the video that I did previously when I said, you know, Caitlin Clark gave her condolences, and she said that she's devastated for Angel Reese. Angel Reese said, you know, she shouted out Caitlin Clark on her podcast. We were like, she's lying. Angel hates Caitlin. And Caitlin don't give a damn about Angel Reese, you know, getting her wrist injured. 
they hate each other. It's like, why do y'all want 22 year old women to have beef? Again, I'm very competitive myself, uh, a very competitive person myself. I love playing sports. I'm like when I'm playing sports, you know, I get very passionate too. You might think I hate somebody because I kind of like, you know, check them in the rib cage while playing basketball or football or something. But it's like, it's just, I just want to win. Does Engelbert appearing to dodge Matheson's questions has the women's basketball community in a collective uproar on Tuesday? Not only are many fans lamenting Engelbert's response on X, aka Twitter, okay, I'm gonna keep calling it Twitter, I don't like X. It says, it appears that some WNBA players are also taking umbrage with it. It says, while it can't be confirmed that Engelbert's comments are what she's referring to, Aces player Alicia Clark posted on X, sweet baby Jesus, with a gift of baffled looking John C. Riley. I'm just gonna add like little clips here and there. I am dead. Chicago Sky Guard Michaela Amyangwe also posted yikes with a crazy face emoji and an apparent reference to her commissioner's comments. His Anya Sky teammate Brianna Turner then posted, my eye must be deceiving me because ain't no way. So Brianna Turner had that to say. Again, guys, you know, race is a very tricky and uncomfortable topic for especially Americans, especially white Americans to talk about, you know, racism, you know, especially, you know, when, when it revolves against black people and sports and the leagues. And it's like, the thing about sports is, and I always say this, like, it's a beautiful concept that, like, you know, it's just a game. It's a game that has people, grown men crying, giving it their all, grown women crying, giving it their all. And sports has a way of, like, bringing people together, no matter your race, your sex, your gender, again, your race, your ethnicity, your culture, your language. But it's also so much racism in sports where it also calls division like if you look at um you know the the world cup i believe fifa soccer it was like you should see like what happens when certain teams lose and like london and stuff it was people on it was black men on tiktok running through the streets of london I, I think spain beat or madrid somebody got beat okay and they were like literally beating up random black men because they team lost like i mean it's just ridiculous how again how emotional men specifically men can be when it comes to sports you know, the racism that's like been, it's tolerated too long, but it's like at the same time, it's like people are grown. It's like, what can you do as a league as a whole? Again, like, I'm baffled with this. Like, I don't, I wouldn't know what to do. If I was with Kathy Engelbert, if I was a WNBA commissioner, you know, this is what my response would be, okay? Now, again, I can say this because I'm black, maybe. That's probably like why, like, again, like she's a white woman. She probably didn't, I'm not trying to make excuses for her, but at the same time, I do understand where she's coming from, okay? She kind of got like, you know, froze up and she kind of tried to redirect that question and tried to make it about, you know, people just like, you know, the rivalry, she, she kind of wanted to like, in a way, just ignore the racism, right? But if I was a WNBA commissioner, this is what I would have told uh, Mr. Matheson on that uh, CNBC uh, interview. I'd have been like, look, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese are two amazingly talented basketball players here are once in a generational, in a generation uh, talent. And it's very unfortunate that there is racism that are, that is plaguing not only these two ladies, but the ladies of the WNBA, it is unacceptable. It needs to stop. And people need to stop being hyper emotional about two 22 year old young women who just want to follow their basketball dreams and, and make a path and career out of that. And also inspire the next generation of young women and young little girls to also play basketball. And we also need, and I also add, it's also very disheartening, okay, to see that not only is racism, not only is there racist undertones and racism that our, our league is being plagued with, but also the anti-LGBT uh, um, undertones and messages, people attacking players due to their sexuality. Again, that is uncalled for. It is not right. And I will not stand for that as a WNBA commissioner. Again, we will treat as fans of the WNBA. Again, I'm grateful for everyone's uh, uh, generated interest in the WNBA, mainly due to the rivalry that Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark had in their college basketball career. But again, we need to understand that these are young women. They have feelings, okay? The women in the WNBA, and it is not right to attack or harass individuals due to their race, gender, ethnic group, language, sexuality, orientation, religious beliefs, etc., etc. I, Kathy Engelbert, the WNBA commissioner, I do not accept that at all. That's all she had to say. Again, like, that's what I would say. But then again, like it's, it's different for me. You know, I'm black. I can kind of, <clears throat> I guess, go there. But I feel like what I just said, and she would have said it, you know, the players in the WNBA wouldn't be looking at her sideways. Like, girl, that's all you have to say. So yeah, guys, again, like it's unfortunate that, you know, people can't grow up. You can't, we, we can't even enjoy a sports game. Again, again, guys, this is a game. It's called basketball. It's a game. Football is a game without all the racism, the sexism, the classism, the anti-homophobiaism, anti you know, all the isms, right? And these, again, these are two very young women. They're only 22. They just graduated college like four or five months ago. 
like we got to hone it in again as fans i get it i'm, I'm very passionate too but like I, I have never and you will never see me i don't care how bad dana uh, evans plays diamond the shields plays i don't care if caitlin clark you know elbows angel reese in the rib i'm not going on nobody's twitter account instagram account dming them in the, in the messages sending them direct messages cussing them out wishing death on them wishing harm upon them and the family like i'm not doing that like if you have a good game the only reason the only way first of all i'm not like you know like obsessed with them like that the only reason why i'll dm a, a professional athlete is just to congratulate them or either it'll come across my feed it's their birthday i just say hey what's up happy birthday that's it i'm either wishing out a happy birthday or just saying hey that last year that you made angel even though you got injured you did that and that's it again i'm not attacking nobody because again at the end of the day even though i'm very passionate and like you know we take it seriously about uh, getting that w and winning it is just a game again like it's sad that a game has adults acting out of character and just acting so hateful the jealousy the envy the conni being conniving vindictive and just evil again it's like there is there should be no tolerance of that in professional sports so what do you guys think about WNBA's commissioner in kathy engelbert's uh response to that question in today's interview and what would you say personally or what do you think kathy engelbert should have said differently comment down below